on October 30th. Um, we'll have our annual business meeting, and I hope everybody can make it. And I know um, Pastor Paul next week is going to share a little bit on what that means as far as membership and not and all that. Um, but that's the week after next. Then for the younger kids, Awana has started up at Blackfoot Christian Fellowship. And I'd like to invite anybody who has younger kids in their life to um, ask them to attend. Um, my daughter Kayla has decided she wants to help out on Wednesdays, so we're going to try to figure that out uh, because it's ages kindergarten to sixth grade, and she's just she's aged out now, unfortunately. So um, she'll be joining them though as a leader. And they are going to also be doing Operation Christmas Child shoe boxes. And they're going to do the shoe that grows, hopefully, with each shoe box. Um, they're going to order the first set of those on the 30th also. So Laura Mansonier has asked me to just say if anybody wants to donate toward the Shoe That Grows project. And what those are is it's a shoe that they can give away that grows pretty well through the life of a child. It grows from like a size like a toddler size into an older kid size. And it just kind of like stretches out. It looks like a, a sandal. Um, and they're really kind of like one of those um, closed-toed sandals and they kind of open out. And they're really, really versatile and really useful for kids who have to have shoes to go to school. And um, so the first deadline for that is October 30th, and then they're also going to be collecting for um, another project where uh, one of the kids at their church is going um, to Cambodia. Um, a kid, I say he's a kid because I remember when he was four. Um, he's 18 now, and he's going with Youth with a Mission um, to Cambodia. So, uh, and that's Caleb Joyner. So if you want to give to one of those projects, I'll try to bring more information next week. Um, and they'll be doing that on the 30th. Um, let's see, were there any other? I have some Sunday school announcements, so I'm going to hand some things out here in a minute when I uh, leave up here um, about a project we're doing in Sunday school. And I think I will just pray for the kids when I get downstairs. Anything else? So. Yes, everybody can have one of these, and I'll just pass these out to parents. Thank you. So I'll pray for the kids when I get down there, and I'm going to turn um, the service over to Mark. And thank you. And kids, you're coming with me. Good morning, everybody. I want to thank you guys for being so welcoming again. Feels like I was just here. Uh, turns out I was just here three weeks ago. So it's nice to be part of a body when something happens. Other people to step up and fill in. I texted Paul a little bit yesterday. It sounds like he's really getting filled up up there and having a good time. So that was real good to hear. And uh, yeah, it's just good to, good to be with you guys today. Um, I got a I got a new journal, so I did my notes slightly differently. So you guys are my experiment a little bit. My my best friend hooked me up with a new a new journal to do stuff with. So um, yeah, first off, got to start with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I just I thank you for this opportunity. I just pray as uh, I'm here to speak, Lord, that you would once again be the great editor, Lord. Things of me would just leave, and things of you would stick. That you would just fill this place up, and you would just give us. Um, ears to hear what you have to say through this today, Lord, and uh, just be with all the kids and everything else going on downstairs. We love you, Lord, and we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so give you guys a little rundown of my life over the last few months. It's been pretty chaotic, and I was just, I wasn't, I wasn't in a very good place for some things, and God just really spoke and worked on my heart over these last couple weeks, and it's just been so incredible, so I just he just really wanted me to share what he's been doing in my life with you guys over this little, last little bit. So I, I started going to the doctor in May for just this terrible pain in my side. They would just take the breath away, couldn't figure it out. I went and got an ultrasound, went and got an MRI, got my gallbladder tested. It's now October. I still don't know what's wrong. You know, they put me on a prescription. It's 
Uh, it's been rough. We had one main worker who had a baby. Good for her. I'm, I'm super thrilled for her. That came out wrong, but we have been just <laughs> struggling at work without her. It has been, we would get off at 6, and now we're there till 7, 8 o'clock at night trying to get stuff done, and just our, not val our quality of work has gone downhill, and it, a lot of it has fallen on me to do some stuff, and it, it has just been so rough. And the youth group has gotten harder. Youth group, we've, we've grown, which is awesome, but man, the attention span as we've grown as a group has shrunk so much. And I have just been struggling with it, just like, God, what is going on with this youth group? Their attention span is just, it's so small. That I feel like they're not getting anything. And I, I was just trying so hard to get to them. And I, I was just, I was just feeling so overwhelmed and burdened. And I just had this building sense of dread. Sunday night would come. And I would just get a pit on my stomach of having to face this next week to come. It was, I, was just, I was just dread waking up the next morning every Sunday night for this last little bit. But like I said, God speaks to us still. He is so good, and he has just worked on me these last two weeks. So I, I was uh, I was been reading Matthew is where he's really been speaking to me. And it, it started in uh, Matthew 11. Most of you guys can probably guess where I'm going with this one. Of course, I don't have it all set up in here. Matthew 11, starting at verse 28, he says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest in your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And I read that, and I laughed a little. I was like, <laughs> no, uh, you're going to have to help me to get there, Lord. Th this is what I need. This is what I want. But I am obviously not there. And you are going to have to help me to get me there. Because I, I need it. And that's where I stopped that day. And I dove in the next day, Matthew 12. And he immediately started speaking to me. Matthew 12, starting at verse 1. At that time, Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. His disciples were hungry and began to pick some of the heads of grain and to eat them. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to him, look your, look, your disciples are doing what is unlawful on the Sabbath, he answered. Haven't you read what David did when he and his companions were hungry? He entered the house of God, and he and his companions ate the consecrated bread, which was not lawful for them to do, but only for the priest. Or haven't you read in the law on, that on the Sabbath, the priest in the temple desecrate the day, and yet are in innocent? I tell you that one greater than the temple is here. If you had known what these words mean, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. You had, would have not condemned the innocent, for the Son of Man is the Lord of Sabbath. And that, that phrase in there that just God put on my heart, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Just I just sat there in that, and he just put it on my heart, and I just kept coming back to that for days. And as I was reading that, that first time he spoke to me and he said, Mark, every time you've been reading the Bible, you've been praying and stuff, your focus is how can you use this in a sermon? How can you use this in a youth lesson? How can you possibly bring this up in conversation? Mark, just be with me. Read the word and just be with me. Stop putting all this pressure and stuff on yourself to do this. Be with me. And, oh, man, you guys, that moment, I, th there was just sitting there, and I just burdened down. There's that burden. There's, there's a little pressure. I, I, I laid a little bit of a burden down for that, and I just I kept sitting in that, though, the still, I desire mercy, not sacrifice. And that led me to Psalms 40. I believe I was starting at six, yes, six through eight. Sacrifice and offering you do not desire, but my ears you have pierced. Burnt offerings and sin offerings you do not require. Then I said, here I am, I have come. It is written about me on the scroll. I desire to do your will, oh my God. Your, your law is within my heart. And as, as, as I read this, I was thinking of something else, this, this sickness, this illness I have. People at work are very aware of it when I walk around with a grimace on my face 
and I'm missing for tests and things. And I put so much pressure on my own shoulders to represent God well while I'm going through this. I wanted them to see God through me as I'm going through this, as I trust him and stuff like that, but I wasn't fully there trusting him. I was trying to put it forward to them to show, and I wasn't actually living it. I was doing the sacrifice. I felt like I was sacrificing myself to show him, but I wasn't accepting his mercy into me, and he just put that on me, and I just like, oh, you're right, God. I got to let this go. I got I to gotta fully trust you in this as I go through this, and I was able to lay another burden down. And he just kept going through Matthew. Matthew 18, he pointed out something else I happened to be carrying because apparently I was a well-packed man. Matthew 18, 21 through 35. I'm going to get a drink real quick. Then, Jesus, then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother when he sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 talents was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. The servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged, and I will pay back everything. The servant's master took pity on him and canceled the debts and let him go. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servants fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay you back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay the debt. When the other servants saw that that had happened, they were greatly distressed and went and told their master everything that had happened. Then the master called the servant in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servants just as I had on you? In anger, his master turned him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive from your brother's heart. And this is something else I didn't quite realize I was carrying. <laughs> Boy, did the God speak to me. I was frustrated. I had been accused of some things at work. There's some things at work that people have, had done to me, and I didn't realize I was carrying this anger, this bitterness towards them as I was going through all this. And God's saying, Mark, you're, you're heavy. You're weighted down unnecessarily. It's not for you to judge them. It is for me to judge them. Forgive them. Let that go. Hebrews 10.30 out of the ESV, For we know him who said, Vengeance is mine. I will repay again and again. The Lord will judge his people. He is the judge. I feel like that's one thing I really have to put in my... We see so much things in this world, these wrongs, these things we feel like th that just shouldn't happen, but it's not for us to judge. We have to give that up. We have to let him be the judge. And that was just something else I was able to let go and lay another burden down. Just this Tuesday, I was preparing for youth group. We were doing First John, diving into that, and I was just praying before I made this lesson and going through this lesson. I was just, God, their attention spans on a scale of one to ten have dropped to a three. Just please help me to have the patience to deal with them and God, this is, they get an hour and a half of church. They get me for an hour and a half, and that is all the church they get, and these kids are hurting and broken, and they need you. Just help me to reach them. I feel like I'm losing some of them, and I was just weighed down with that. I just, they're, they're checking out, and I just, my heart just breaks for them, right? The, I'm some of the only male role models some of these kids get, and they get me for an hour and a half a week. 
and I was just just burdened by the fact that I, I can't be enough for that hour and a half. I, I, I'm scared what's going to happen the further in high school they go and, and beyond. I was just, God, help me, be with me. And as I'm making this lesson out of First John, where he's talking about walking in the light, being the light, and being love and showing them love, I'm just making this lesson. And he just says, Mark, you get them for an hour and a half. I'm not asking you to change their entire lives in this hour and a half. I'm asking you to be the light for them and love them because that's what they need. They might not get everything you say out of these lessons, but if you love them, you will make a difference. And that lesson, that night, you guys, I had 11 kids, and some of them walked up to me and just handed me their cell phones before we even started the class. Thank you. And the ones that had troubles sat away from each other automatically. It was incredible. And they were there, and they listened. I just remember asking the question, how do you know God loves you? How does you know Jesus loves you out of First Baptist? And one of the kids was just like, oh, John 3, 16. He gave his only one. And I was just like, oh, God. I'm like, you're so good, God. And I was just able to lay the burden, the pressure down for these youth at his feet. They're yours, God. I will be your light. I will walk in the light for you, for them, and I will love them. But they are yours to do with. I get them for that hour, and I'm going to do the best I can with that hour and a half. But God, they are yours. And this has just been my last few weeks just laying, just laying these things down as I go through this. And I've just I've felt so much lighter through it, giving these things up. I mean, I got a, I got a appointment scheduled with my boss on Wednesday just to find out my future of my work. I've been there for 10 years. I don't know if there's anywhere further I can go, right? Just trying to figure out my my future in a sense is is this where i'm going to be forever is this do i need to start looking for something else is there things i need to do it's been two years since i've gotten a raise or even a review which is really hard for me to do because i'm the one that gives everybody else raises and reviews and i looked at my check and he just randomly gave me a dollar raise before i even set up a meeting with him and just god taking care of me in that way too and it's just something else i can lay down Everything is definitely not perfect. I'm still having that meeting with him. If I can't grow, I'm getting a camera down my throat on Tuesday to see if they could find out what's going on with my side. Everything's not okay, but it's better. It's light, lighter. These burdens have been laid down, and I can can just trust him with it. And it's just so good to have a God that is so real that we could dive into his word, and he can still speak to us, that he is there listening by our side, even when we don't even realize it. You know, Paul went to this conference. Conveniently, Jason didn't, so I can come here today, right? Otherwise, I'd be filling in at the rock. God is just in control and working things, and he is so real today and so good working in our lives today. So as you guys go throughout the rest of this day, the rest of this week, think about things that you might be carrying, those burdens that you might not realize you have that you might need to lay down. Read through this parts of Matthew and just pray and think about and talk to him. And like he told me, just be with me. Just be with him. Read and pray and just sit with him in his presence. As I continue to go through this book, I got towards the end when he dies for us on the cross. Matthew 27, starting at verse 45. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lakta shabachni, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, He's calling Elijah. Immediately, one of them ran and got a sponge. He filled it with wine vinegar put it on a stick, and offered it to Jesus to drink. The rest said, now leave him alone. Let's see if Jesus, or if Eli comes to save him. And when Jesus had cried out again in a loud voice, he gave up his spirit. And I was reading this, and it was just me and him. And he said, I did that for you. I would do that again if it was just you not the rest of the world. And 
I just sat there overwhelmed by his love for me, carrying that guilt and burden of sin that I was able to lay at his feet on the cross in that moment, giving up that burden for him because he loves us so much. And he is living and there, just sat there, overwhelmed by his love. Guys, that's, that was my week. That was my couple weeks, and it was just so rejuvenating and so just eye-opening. And I just, I pray that as you guys go through this and you just, you just would think of those things and just take time to be with him because he is so good. And he loves each and every one of us so much. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you that you carried that cross for us, that you died on the cross on each, for each and every single one of us, for our sins, Lord, and all these things that we're carrying that we might not realize, Lord, that we would take the time to come before you and lay them down at your feet because you are God and you are good and you will carry them for us, Lord. We need to lean into you, spend time with you, just you, Lord, and soak you in. Your plan for us is better than any plan we could come for ourselves. And as we lean in, we can find that and trust you in it, and the burdens get lifted. Not try to force you, Lord, but just live for you. Speak the gospel at all times, and when necessary, use words by filling ourselves up with you and walking in the light. God, I thank you again for this opportunity. I thank you for this body and the body in whole, Lord, that we are all a part of. Lord, we love you. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Side note and things like that, guys. Uh, October is Pastor Appreciation Month. It just came to me while I was speaking. So if you guys could get a, Paul, a card for Paul and Sherry, get them a gift card, buy them a pizza, do something, I'm sure they would absolutely appreciate it. But yeah, that's what I got for you guys. I think thank you guys for having me back, and I uh, hope you guys have a blessed week. Hey Joe, hey Joe, why don't we need to pray for you? Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting too religious. He says he keeps threatening me with that. Did I step on toes too? Ah oh, man. Oh, uh, somebody want to come up and help me pray for him for his um, his uh, um, putting the camera down his throat? Find out what's wrong. Hopefully. Father, we just pray for Mark Powell. We just thank you that he is here. We thank you, Father, that he is preaching from your word, God. And we ask God that as he goes about getting his camera down his throat, that, Father, that you would show them, the doctors, what's wrong, mm-hmm. God, so he can get it fixed and get to, away from this pain, God, and it's uncomfortable. And, Lord, we also ask for his leading his friends here, God, you be there with him, God, and that he uh, fruitful meeting.